Hindi cinema, often known as Bollywood and formerly as Bombay cinema, is the Indian Hindi language film industry based in Mumbai, formerly Bombay. The term is a portmanteau of Bombay and Hollywood. The industry is related to other regional industries, making up Indian cinema, the world's largest by number of feature films produced. Indian cinema is the world's largest film industry in film production, with an annual output of 1,986 feature films in 2017. Bollywood is its largest film producer, with 364 Hindi films produced in 2017. Bollywood represents 43% of Indian net box office revenue, Tamil and Telugu cinema represent 36%, and the remaining regional cinema constituted 21% in 2014. Bollywood is one of the largest centers of film production in the world. In 2001 ticket sales, Indian cinema including Bollywood reportedly sold an estimated 3.6 billion tickets worldwide, compared to Hollywood's 2.6 billion tickets sold. Bollywood films tend to use a colloquial dialect of Hindi Urdu or Hindustani, mutually intelligible by Hindi and Urdu speakers, and modern Bollywood films increasingly incorporate elements of Hinglish. The most popular commercial genre in Bollywood since the 1970s has been the masala film, which freely mixes different genres including action, comedy, romance, drama and melodrama along with musical numbers. Masala films generally fall under the musical film genre, of which Indian cinema has been the largest producer since the 1960s when it exceeded the American film industry's total musical output after musical films declined in the West. The first Indian musical talkie was Alamara, 1931, several years after the first Hollywood musical talkie The Jazz Singer, 1927. Alongside commercial masala films, a distinctive genre of art films known as parallel cinema has also existed, presenting realistic content and avoidance of musical numbers. In more recent years, the distinction between commercial masala and parallel cinema has been gradually blurring, with an increasing number of mainstream films adopting the conventions which were once strictly associated with parallel cinema. Topic. Etymology Bollywood is a portmanteau derived from Bombay the former name for Mumbai and Hollywood, California, the center of the American film industry. Unlike Hollywood, Bollywood is not a physical place, its name is criticized by some film journalists and critics, who believe it implies that the industry is a poor cousin of Hollywood. According to OxfordDictionaries.com, the word Bollywood originated during the 1970s, when Indian cinema overtook Hollywood in film production. A number of journalists have been credited by newspapers with coining the word. According to a 2004 article in The Hindu, journalist Bevinda Koliko coined the word. A Telegraph article the following year report that Amit Khanna was its creator. According to Madhava Prasad, author of Surviving Bollywood, the term Bollywood was preceded by Tollywood, which then referred to the cinema of West Bengal. The Bengali film industry, based in Tollygunj, Calcutta, was referred to as Tollywood. In a 1932 American Cinematographer article. Topic: History. Topic: Early history, 1890s to 1940s. In 1897, a film presentation by Professor Stevenson featured a stage show at Calcutta's Star Theatre. With Stevenson's encouragement and camera, Haralal Sen, an Indian photographer, made a film of scenes from that show, The Flower of Persia 1898. The Wrestlers 1899 by H. S. Batavdekar showed a wrestling match at the Hanging Gardens in Bombay. Dada Saheb Falka's Silent Raja Harishchandra is the first feature film made in India. By the 1930s, the industry was producing over 200 films per year. 
The first Indian sound film, Ardeshir Arani's Alamara 1931, was commercially successful. With a great demand for talkies and musicals, Bollywood and the other regional film industries quickly switched to sound films. The 1930s and 1940s were tumultuous times, India was buffeted by the Great Depression, World War II, the Indian independence movement, and the violence of the partition. Although most Bollywood films were unabashedly escapist, a number of filmmakers tackled tough social issues or used the struggle for Indian independence as a backdrop for their films. Irani made the first Hindi color film, Kisan Kanya, in 1937. The following year, he made a color version of Mother India. However, color did not become a popular feature until the late 1950s. At this time, lavish romantic musicals and melodramas were cinematic staples. Before the 1947 partition of India, which divided the country into the Republic of India and Pakistan, the Bombay film industry now called Bollywood was closely linked to the Lahore film industry now the Lollywood industry of Pakistani cinema, both produced films in Hindi-Urdu or Hindustani, the lingua franca of northern and central India. Another center of Hindi-Urdu film production was the Bengali film industry in Calcutta, Bengal Presidency now Kolkata, West Bengal, which produced Hindi-Urdu films and local Bengali language films. Many actors, filmmakers and musicians from the Lahore industry migrated to the Bombay industry during the 1940s, including actors K. L. Seigal, Prithviraj Kapoor, Dilip Kumar and Dev Anand, playback singers Muhammad Rafi, Noor Jahan, and Shamsh Shard Begum. Around the same time, filmmakers and actors from the Calcutta film industry began migrating to Bombay. As a result, Bombay became the centre of Hindi Urdu film production in the Republic of India after partition. During this time period, actors such as Shantaram, Paidi Jairaj, and Motilal have made their mark. For decades after partition, the Bombay industry was dominated by actors, filmmakers and musicians from Bengal, Punjab, particularly the present-day Pakistani Punjab, and the northwest frontier province present-day Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. <laughs> Golden Age Late 1940s to 1960s The period from the late 1940s to the early 1960s, after India's independence, is regarded by film historians as the golden age of Hindi cinema. Some of the most critically acclaimed Hindi films of all time were produced during this time. Examples include Pyasa and Kargas Ki Fool 1959, directed by Guru Dutt and written by Abra Alvi, Awara and Shri 420 directed by Raj Kapoor and written by Khwaja Ahmed Abbas, and Aan directed by Mehboob Khan and starring Dilip Kumar. The films explored social themes, primarily dealing with working class life in India, particularly urban life, in the first two examples. Awara presented the city as both nightmare and dream, and Pyasa critiqued the unreality of urban life. Mehboob Khan's Mother India, 1957, a remake of his earlier Aurat, 1940, was the first Indian film nominated for the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film. It lost by a single vote. Mother India defined conventional Hindi cinema for decades. It spawned a genre of dacoit films, in turn defined by Gunga Jumna 1961. Written and produced by Dilip Kumar, Gunga Jumna was a dacoit crime drama about two brothers on opposite sides of the law, a theme which became common in Indian films during the 1970s. Some of the best-known epic films of Hindi cinema were also produced at this time, such as K. Asif Smuggle e Azam Other acclaimed mainstream Hindi filmmakers during this period included Kamal Amrohi and Vijay Bhatt. The three most popular male Indian actors of the 1950s and 1960s were Dilip Kumar, Raj Kapoor, and Dev Anand, each with a unique acting style. 
Kapoor adopted Charlie Chaplin's Tramp, Anand modeled himself on suave Hollywood stars like Gregory Peck and Cary Grant, and Kumar pioneered a form of method acting which predated Hollywood method actors such as Marlon Brando. Kumar, who was described as the ultimate method actor by Satyajit Ray, inspired future generations of Indian actors. Much like Brando's influence on Robert De Niro and Al Pacino, Kumar had a similar influence on Amitabh Bachchan, Nasiruddin Shah, Shah Rukh Khan and Nawazuddin Siddiqui. Veteran actresses such as Saraya, Nargis, Sumitra Devi, Madhubala, Meena Kumari, Wahida Raman, Nutan, Sadhana, Mala Sinha and Vijayanthamala have had their share of influence on Hindi cinema. While commercial Hindi cinema was thriving, the 1950s also saw the emergence of a parallel cinema movement. Although the movement emphasizing social realism was led by Bengali cinema, it also began gaining prominence in Hindi cinema. Early examples of parallel cinema include Dati Ki Lal 1946, directed by Khwaja Ahmed Abbas and based on the Bengal famine of 1943, Nietzsche Nagar 1946, directed by Chetan Anand and written by Khwaja Ahmed Abbas, and Bimal Roy's Do Bigger Zaman 1953. Their critical acclaim and the latter's commercial success paved the way for Indian neorealism and the Indian New Wave synonymous with parallel cinema. Internationally acclaimed Hindi filmmakers involved in the movement included Mani Kaul, Kumar Shahani, Ketan Mehta, Govind Nihalani, Shyam Benegal, and Vijaya Mehta. After the social realist film Nietzsche Naga received the Palm d'Or at the inaugural 1946 Cannes Film Festival, Hindi films were frequently in competition for Cannes Top Prize during the 1950s and early 1960s and some won major prizes at the festival. Guru Dutt, overlooked during his lifetime, received belated international recognition during the 1980s. Film critics polled by the British magazine Sight and Sound included several of Dutt's films in a 2002 list of greatest films, and Time's all-time 100 movies lists PYASA as one of the greatest films of all time. During the late 1960s and early 1970s, the industry was dominated by musical romance films with romantic hero leads. Topic. Classic Bollywood 1970s to 1980s By 1970, Hindi cinema was thematically stagnant and dominated by musical romance films. The arrival of screenwriting duo Salim Javed, Salim Khan and Javed Akhtar was a paradigm shift, revitalizing the industry. They began the genre of gritty, violent, Bombay underworld crime films early in the decade with films such as Zanjir 1973 and Diwar 1975. Salim Javid reinterpreted the rural themes of Mehboob Khan's Mother India 1957 and Dilip Kumar's Gunga Jumna 1961 in a contemporary urban context, reflecting the socio-economic and socio-political climate of 1970s India and channeling mass discontent, disillusionment and the unprecedented growth of slums with anti-establishment themes and those involving urban poverty, corruption and crime. Their angry young man Personified by Amitabh Bachchan, reinterpreted Dilip Kumar's performance in Gunga Jumna in a contemporary urban context and voice of the anguish of the urban poor. By the mid 1970s, romantic confections had given way to gritty, violent crime films and action films about gangsters, the Bombay underworld, and bandits, decoits. Salim Javid's writing and Amitabh Bachchan's acting popularized the trend with films such as Zanjir and particularly Diwar, a crime film inspired by Gunga Jumna which pitted a policeman against his brother, a gang leader based on real-life smuggler Haji Mastan. Bachchan, according to Danny Boyle, Diwar was absolutely key to Indian cinema. In addition to Betchen, several other actors followed by riding the crest of the trend which lasted into the early 1990s actresses from the era include Hema Malini, Jaya Betchen, Rakhi, Shabana Azmi, Zenat Aman, Parveen Babi, Rekha, Dimple Kapadia, Smita Patil, Jaya Prada and Padmini Kolapur. The name, Bollywood, 
was coined during the 1970s, when the conventions of commercial Bollywood films were defined. Key to this was the Masala film, which combines a number of genres action, comedy, romance, drama, melodrama, and musical. The Masala film was pioneered early in the decade by filmmaker Nazir Hussain, and the Salim Javid screenwriting duo, pioneering the Bollywood blockbuster format. Yardin Ki Bharat 1973, directed by Hussein and written by Salim Javid, has been identified as the first masala film and the first quintessentially Bollywood film. Salim Javid wrote more successful masala films during the 1970s and 1980s. Masala films made Amitabh Bachchan the biggest Bollywood star of the period. A landmark of the genre was Amar Akbar Antony directed by Manmohan Desai and written by Kader Khan, and Desai continued successfully exploiting the genre. Both genres masala and violent crime films are represented by the blockbuster Sholay 1975, written by Salim Javid and starring Amitabh Bachchan. It combined the decoit film conventions of Mother India and Gunga Jumna with spaghetti westerns, spawning the decoit western, also known as the curry western, which was popular during the 1970s. Some Hindi filmmakers, such as Shyam Benegal, Mani Kaul, Kumar Shahani, Ketan Mehta, Govind Nihalani, and Vijay Mehta, continued to produce realistic parallel cinema throughout the 1970s. Although the art film bent of the Film Finance Corporation was criticized during a 1976 Committee on Public Undertakings investigation which accused the corporation of not doing enough to encourage commercial cinema, the decade saw the rise of commercial cinema with films such as Sholay 1975, which consolidated Amitabh Bachchan's position as a star. The devotional classic Jai Santoshi Ma was also released that year. By 1983, the Bombay film industry was generating an estimated annual revenue of 700 crore rupees, 7 billion rupees, $693. 14 million, equivalent to $1.74 billion, 11,133 crore rupees, 111.33 billion rupees when adjusted for inflation. The most internationally acclaimed Hindi film of the 1980s was Mira Nair's Salam Bombay. 1988, which won the Camera d'Or at the 1988 Cannes Film Festival and was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film. Topic: <laughs> New Bollywood 1990s present. Hindi cinema experienced another period of stagnation during the late 1980s with a box office decline due to increasing violence, a decline in musical quality, and a rise in video piracy. Middle class family audiences began abandoning the cinema. The turning point came with Kayamat Shay Kayamat Tak, directed by Mansour Khan, written and produced by his father Nazir Hussain and starring his cousin, Amir Khan, and Juhi Chawla. Its blend of youthfulness, family entertainment, emotional intelligence and strong melodies lured audiences back to the big screen. It formed a new template for Bollywood musical romance films which defined 1990s Hindi cinema, known since the 1990s as New Bollywood. Contemporary Bollywood is linked to economic liberalization in India during the early 1990s. Early in the decade, the pendulum swung back toward family-centered romantic musicals. Kayamat Shay Kayamat Tak was followed by blockbusters such as Main Pyar Kiya 1989, Chandani 1989, Hum Aap Ke Hain Kaun 1994, Dilwali Dulhania La Jayinga 1995, Raja Hindustani 1996, Dil to Pagal High 1997, and Kuch Kuch Hota High 1998, introducing a new generation of popular actors, including the three Khans, Amir, Shah Rukh, and Salman, who have starred in most of the top ten highest-grossing Bollywood films. The Khans have had successful careers since the late 1980s, and have dominated the Indian box office for three decades. 
Shah Rukh Khan was the most successful Indian actor for most of the 1990s and 2000s, and Amir Khan has been the most successful Indian actor since the mid 2000s. Action and comedy films, starring such actors as Akshay Kumar and Govinda, were also successful. The decade marked the entrance of new performers in art and independent films, some of which were commercially successful. The most influential example was Satya, 1998, directed by Ram Gopal. Varma and written by Anurag Kashyap. Its critical and commercial success led to the emergence of a genre known as Mumbai Noir, urban films reflecting the city's social problems. This led to a resurgence of parallel cinema by the end of the decade. The films featured actors whose performances were often praised by critics. The 2000s saw increased Bollywood recognition worldwide due to growing and prospering NRI and Desi communities overseas. The growth of the Indian economy and a demand for quality entertainment in this era led the country's film industry to new heights in production values, cinematography and screenwriting as well as technical advances in areas such as special effects and animation. Some of the largest production houses, among them Yash Raj Films and Dharma Productions were the producers of new modern films. Some popular films of the decade were Keho Na. Pyar Hai 2000, Gadar, Ek Prem Katha 2001, Lagan 2001, Khoi. Mil Gaya 2003, Kal Ho Na Ho 2003, Veer Zara 2004, Rangda Basanti 2006, Laga Raho Munna Bai 2006, Doom 2 2006, Krish 2006 and Jab We Met 2007, among others, showing the rise of new movie stars. During the 2010s, the industry saw established stars such as Salman Khan, Akshay Kumar and Shah Rukh Khan making big-budget masala films like Dabang 2010, Ektar Tiger 2012, Rowdy Rathor 2012, Chennai Express 2013, Kick 2014 and Happy New Year 2014 with much younger actresses. Although the films were often not praised by critics, they were commercially successful. Some of the films starring Amir Khan have been credited with redefining and modernizing the masala film with a distinct brand of socially conscious cinema. Most stars from the 2000s continued successful careers into the next decade, and the 2010s saw a new generation of popular actors in different films. Among new conventions, female-centered films such as The Dirty Picture 2011, Kahani 2012, and Queen 2014 started gaining wide financial success. <laughs> <laughs> Influences on Bollywood Moti Gokulzing and Wimal Dasanayaka identify six major influences which have shaped Indian popular cinema. The branching structures of ancient Indian epics, like the Mahabharata and Ramayana. Indian popular films often have plots which branch off into subplots. Ancient Sanskrit drama, with its stylized nature and emphasis on spectacle in which music, dance and gesture combine to create a vibrant artistic unit with dance and mime being central to the dramatic experience." Matthew Jones of De Montfort University also identifies the Sanskrit concept of rasa, or, "...the emotions felt by the audience as a result of the actor's presentation," as crucial to Bollywood films. Traditional folk theatre, which became popular around the 10th century with the decline of Sanskrit theatre. Its regional traditions include the Jatra of Bengal, the Ramlila of Uttar Pradesh, and the Terakuttu of Tamil Nadu. Parsi theatre, which "...blended realism and fantasy, music and dance, narrative and spectacle, earthy dialogue and ingenuity of stage presentation, integrating them into a dramatic discourse of melodrama." The Parsi plays contained crude humor, melodious songs and music, sensationalism and dazzling stagecraft. Hollywood, where musicals were popular from the 1920s to the 1950s. 
Western musical television, particularly MTV, which has had an increasing influence since the 1990s. Its pace, camera angles, dance sequences and music may be seen in 2000s Indian films. An early example of this approach was Mani Ratnam's Bombay 1995. Sharmistha Guptu identifies Indo-Persian Islamic culture as a major influence. During the early 20th century, Urdu was the lingua franca of popular cultural performance across northern India and established in popular performance art traditions such as nauch dancing, Urdu poetry, and Parsi theatre. Urdu and related Hindi dialects were the most widely understood across northern India, and Hindustani became the standard language of early Indian talkies. Films based on Persianate adventure romances led to a popular genre of Arabian Nights cinema. Scholars Chowdhury Diptakirti and Rachel Dwyer and screenwriter Javed Akhtar identify Urdu literature as a major influence on Hindi cinema. Most of the screenwriters and scriptwriters of classic Hindi cinema came from Urdu literary backgrounds, from Khwaja Ahmed Abbas and Akhtar al Iman to Salim Javed and Rahi Masoom Raza. A handful came from other Indian literary traditions, such as Bengali and Hindi literature. Most of Hindi cinema's classic scriptwriters wrote primarily in Urdu, including Salim Javed, Gulzar, Rajinder Singh Bedi, Inda Raj Anand, Rahi Masoom Raza, and Wajahat Mirza. Urdu poetry and the Ghazal tradition strongly influenced filmy Bollywood lyrics. Javed Akhtar was also greatly influenced by Urdu novels by Pakistani author Ibn E. Safi, such as the Jasuzi Dunya and Imran series of detective novels. They inspired, for example, famous Bollywood characters such as Gubba Singh in Sholay 1975 and Magambo in Mr. India 1987. Todd Statman identifies several foreign influences on 1970s commercial Bollywood masala films, including New Hollywood, Italian exploitation films, and Hong Kong martial arts cinema. After the success of Bruce Lee films such as Enter the Dragon in India, Diwa and other Bollywood films incorporated fight scenes inspired by 1970s martial arts films from Hong Kong cinema until the 1990s. Bollywood action scenes emulated Hong Kong rather than Hollywood, emphasizing acrobatics and stunts and combining kung fu as perceived by Indians with Indian martial arts such as Pelwani. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Influence of Bollywood. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> India. Perhaps Bollywood's greatest influence has been on India's national identity, where with the rest of Indian cinema it has become part of the Indian story. In India, Bollywood is often associated with India's national identity. According to economist and Bollywood biographer Meghnad Desai, cinema actually has been the most vibrant medium for telling India its own story, the story of its struggle for independence, its constant struggle to achieve national integration and to emerge as a global presence." Scholar Bridget Schultzer has written that Indian films, most notably Mehboob Khan's Mother India 1957, played a key role in shaping the Republic of India's national identity in the early years after independence from the British Raj. The film conveyed a sense of Indian nationalism to urban and rural citizens alike. Bollywood has long influenced Indian society and culture as the biggest entertainment industry. Many of the country's musical, dancing, wedding, and fashion trends are Bollywood inspired. Bollywood fashion trendsetters have included Madhubala in Mughal e Azam and Madhuri Dixit in Hum Aap Ke Hain Kone. 1994. Bollywood has also had a socio political impact on Indian society, reflecting Indian politics. In classic 1970s Bollywood films, Bombay underworld crime films written by Salim Javid and starring Amitabh Bachchan such as Zanjir 1973 and Diwar 1975 reflected the socio-economic and socio-political realities of contemporary India. 
They channeled growing popular discontent and disillusionment and state failure to ensure welfare and well-being at a time of inflation, shortages, loss of confidence in public institutions, increasing crime and the unprecedented growth of slums. Salim Javid and Betchen's films dealt with urban poverty, corruption and organized crime, they were perceived by audiences as anti-establishment, often with an angry young man protagonist presented as a vigilante or anti-hero whose suppressed rage voiced the anguish of the urban poor. <laughs> <laughs> Overseas Bollywood has been a significant form of soft power for India, increasing its influence and changing overseas perceptions of India. In Germany, Indian stereotypes included bullock carts, beggars, sacred cows, corrupt politicians, and catastrophes before Bollywood and the IT industry transformed global perceptions of India. According to author Rupa Swaminathan, Bollywood cinema is one of the strongest global cultural ambassadors of a new India. Its role in expanding India's global influence is comparable to Hollywood's similar role with American influence. During the 2000s, Bollywood began influencing musical films in the Western world and was instrumental role in reviving the American musical film. Baz Luhrmann said that his musical film, Moulin Rouge, 2001, was inspired by Bollywood musicals. The film incorporated a Bollywood style dance scene with a song from the film China Gate. The critical and financial success of Moulin Rouge began a renaissance of Western musical films such as Chicago, Rent, and Dreamgirls. Indian film composer A. R. Rahman wrote the music for Andrew Lloyd Webber's Bombay Dreams, and a musical version of Hum Aap K. Hain Khon was staged in London's West End. The Bollywood sports film Lagan was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film, and two other Bollywood films 2002's Devdas and 2006's Rangda Basanti were nominated for the BAFTA Award for Best Film Not in the English Language. Danny Boyle's Slumdog Millionaire 2008, which won four Golden Globes and eight Academy Awards, was inspired by Bollywood films and is considered an homage to Hindi commercial cinema. It was also inspired by Mumbai underworld crime films, such as Diwa 1975, Satya 1998, Company 2002, and Black Friday 2007. Diwa had a Hong Kong remake, The Brothers 1979, which inspired John Woo's internationally acclaimed breakthrough A Better Tomorrow 1986. The latter was a template for Hong Kong action cinema's heroic bloodshed genre, Angry Young Man. 1970s epics such as Diwa and Amar Akbar Antony also resemble the heroic bloodshed genre of 1980s Hong Kong action cinema. The influence of filmy may be seen in popular music worldwide. Technopop pioneers Haruomi Hasono and Yuichi Sakamoto of the Yellow Magic Orchestra produced a 1978 electronic album, Kochi Moon, based on an experimental fusion of electronic music and Bollywood-inspired Indian music. Truth Hurts 2002 song, Addictive, produced by DJ Quick and Dr. Dre, was lifted from Lata Mangeshka's Thoda Resham Lagta Hai in Jyoti 1981. The Black Eyed Peas Grammy Award winning 2005 song, Don't Funk With My Heart, was inspired by two 1970s Bollywood songs, Ye Mera Dil Ya Ka Diwana, from Don 1978, and Air Nujawan Hai Sub, from APRA 1972. Both songs were composed by Kalyanji Ananji, sung by Asha Bosle, and featured the dancer Helen. The Kronos Quartet re recorded several R. D. Berman compositions sung by Asha Bosle for their 2005 album, You've Stolen My Heart, songs from R. D. Berman's Bollywood, which was nominated for Best Contemporary World Music Album at the 2006 Grammy Awards. Filmy music composed by A. R. Rahman, who received two Academy Awards for the Slumdog Millionaire soundtrack, has frequently been sampled by other musicians, including the Singaporean artist Kelly Poon, the French rap group Le Caution and the American artist Sierra. 
Many Asian underground artists, particularly those among the overseas Indian diaspora, have also been inspired by Bollywood music. Topic. Genres Bollywood films are primarily musicals, and are expected to have catchy song and dance numbers woven into the script. A film's success often depends on the quality of such musical numbers. A film's music is often released before the film itself, increasing its audience. Indian audiences expect value for money, and a good film is generally referred to as Pais of Asul, literally money's worth. Songs, dances, love triangles, comedy and daredevil thrills are combined in a three-hour show with an intermission. These are called masala films, after the Hindi word for a spice mixture. Like masalas, they are a mixture of action, comedy and romance, most have heroes who can fight off villains single-handedly. Bollywood plots have tended to be melodramatic, frequently using formulaic ingredients such as star-crossed lovers, angry parents, love triangles, family ties, sacrifice, political corruption, kidnapping, villains, kind-hearted courtesans, long-lost relatives and siblings, reversals of fortune and serendipity. Parallel cinema films, in and outside Bollywood, tended to be less popular at the box office. A large Indian diaspora in English-speaking countries and increased Western influence in India have nudged Bollywood films closer to Hollywood, according to film critic Lata Kubchandani. Our earliest films had liberal doses of sex and kissing scenes in them. Strangely, it was after independence the censor board came into being and so did all the strictures. Although Bollywood plots feature westernized urbanites dating and dancing in clubs rather than pre-arranged marriages, traditional Indian culture continues to exist outside the industry and is an element of resistance by some to Western influences. Bollywood plays a major role, however, in Indian fashion. Studies have indicated that some people, unaware that changing fashion in Bollywood films is often influenced by globalization, consider the clothes worn by Bollywood actors as authentically Indian. Topic. Casts and crews Bollywood employs people from throughout India. It attracts thousands of aspiring actors and actresses hoping for a break in the industry. Models and beauty contestants, television actors, stage actors and ordinary people come to Mumbai with the hope of becoming a star. As in Hollywood, very few succeed. Since many Bollywood films are shot abroad, many foreign extras are employed, very few non-Indian actors are able to make a mark in Bollywood, although many have tried. There have been exceptions, however, and the hit film Rangda Basanti starred the English Alice Patton. Kisner, Lagan, and The Rising, Ballad of Mangal Pandey also featured foreign actors, and Australian born actress Emma Brown Garrett has starred in a few Indian films. Bollywood can be insular, and relatives of film industry figures have an edge in obtaining coveted roles in films or being part of a film crew. However, industry connections are no guarantee of a long career, competition is fierce, and film industry scions will falter if they do not succeed at the box office. Stars such as Dilip Kumar, Dharmendra, Amitabh Bachchan, Rajesh Khanna, Rishi Kapoor, Anil Kapoor, Sunny Deol, Shri Devi, Madhuri Dixit and Shah Rukh Khan lacked show business connections. Topic. Dialogues and lyrics Film scripts known as dialogues in Indian English and their song lyrics are often written by different people. Scripts are usually written in an unadorned Hindi Urdu, known as Hindustani, which would be understood by the largest possible audience. Bollywood films tend to use a colloquial dialect of Hindi Urdu, mutually intelligible by Hindi and Urdu speakers. Most of the classic scriptwriters of what is known as Hindi cinema, including Salim Javed, Gulzar, Rajinder Singh Bedi, Inda Raj Anand, Rahi Masoom Raza and Wajahat Mirza, primarily wrote in Urdu. 
Salim Javid wrote in Urdu script, which was then transcribed by an assistant into Devanagari script so Hindi readers could read the Urdu dialogues. During the 1970s, the Urdu writers and screenwriters Krishan Chanda and Ismat Hutai said that, "...more than 75% of films are made in Urdu," but were categorized as Hindi films by the government. Urdu poetry has strongly influenced Bollywood songs, whose lyrics also draw from the Ghazal tradition. Some films have used regional dialects to evoke a village setting, or archaic Urdu in medieval historical films. In her book, The Cinematic Imagination, Jyotikar Virdi wrote about the presence of Urdu in Hindi films. Urdu is often used in film titles, screenplay, lyrics, the language of love, war, and martyrdom. Virdi notes that although Urdu was widely used in classic Hindi cinema decades after partition because it was widely taught in pre-partition India, its use has declined in modern Hindi cinema. The extent of Urdu used in commercial Hindi cinema has not been stable. The decline of Urdu is mirrored in Hindi films. It is true that many Urdu words have survived and have become part of Hindi cinema's popular vocabulary. But that is as far as it goes. For the most part, popular Hindi cinema has forsaken the florid Urdu that was part of its extravagance and retained a residual Urdu. However, Urdu continues to be used in Bollywood films for dialogues and particularly songs. Contemporary mainstream films also use English, according to the article Bollywood Audiences Editorial. English has begun to challenge the ideological work done by Urdu. Some film scripts are first written in Latin script. Characters may shift from one language to the other to evoke a particular atmosphere for example, English in a business setting and Hindi in an informal one. The blend of Hindi, Urdu and English sometimes heard in modern Bollywood films, known as Hinglish, has become increasingly common. Cinematic language in dialogues or lyrics is often melodramatic, invoking God, family, mother, duty, and self-sacrifice. Song lyrics are often about love. Bollywood song lyrics, especially in older films, frequently use the poetic vocabulary of court Urdu, with a number of Persian loanwords. Another source for love lyrics in films such as Janak Janak Pale Baje and Lagan is the long Hindu tradition of poetry about the loves of Krishna, Radha, and the Gopis. Music directors often prefer working with certain lyricists, and the lyricist and composer may be seen as a team. This phenomenon has been compared to the pairs of American composers and songwriters who created classic Broadway musicals. Topic. Sound Sound in early Bollywood films was usually not recorded on location sync sound. It was usually created or recreated in the studio, with the actors speaking their lines in the studio and sound effects added later, this created synchronization problems. Commercial Indian films are known for their lack of ambient sound, and the Areflex 3 camera necessitated dubbing. Lagan 2001 was filmed with sync sound, and several Bollywood films have recorded on location sound since then. Topic female makeup artists In 1955, the Bollywood Cine Costume Makeup Artist and Hair Dressers Association CCMAA ruled that female makeup artists were barred from membership. The Supreme Court of India ruled in 2014 that the ban violated Indian constitutional guarantees under Article 14 Right to Equality, 19 1 G Freedom to Work and Article 21 Right to Liberty. According to the court, the ban had no rationale nexus to the cause sought to be achieved and was unacceptable, impermissible and inconsistent with the constitutional rights guaranteed to India's citizens. The court also found illegal the rule which mandated that for any artist to work in the industry, they must have lived for five years in the state where they intend to work. In 2015, it was announced that Charu Karana was the first woman registered by the Cine Costume Makeup Artist and Hair Dressers Association. Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Song and Dance. Bollywood film music is called filmi from the Hindi of films. Bollywood songs were introduced with Ardeshi Irani's Alam Ara 1931 song Dada Kuda Ki Bollywood songs are generally pre-recorded by professional playback singers with the actors then lip-syncing the words to the song on screen often while dancing. Although most actors are good dancers, few are also singers. A notable exception was Kishore Kumar, who starred in several major films during the 1950s while having a rewarding career as a playback singer. K. L. Seigel, Sareya, and Noor Jehan were known as singers and actors, and some actors in the last 30 years have sung one or more songs themselves. Songs can make and break a film, determining whether it will be a flop or a hit. Few films without successful musical tracks, and even fewer without any songs and dances, succeed. Globalization has changed Bollywood music, with lyrics an increasing mix of Hindi and English. Global trends such as salsa, pop, and hip hop have influenced the music heard in Bollywood films. Playback singers are featured in the opening credits, and have fans who will see an otherwise lackluster film to hear their favorites. Notable Bollywood singers are Lata Mangeshka, Asha Bosle, Geeta Dutt, Shamshad Begum, Kavita Krishnamurthy, Sadhana Sargam, Alka Yagnik and Shriya Goshal female, and K. L. Seigal, Talat Mahmood, Makesh, Muhammad Rafi, Mana Day, Hemant Kumar, Kishore Kumar, Kumar Sanu, Udit Narayan and Sonu Nigam male, Kishore Kumar and Muhammad Rafi have been considered the finest singers of Bollywood songs, followed by Lata Mangeshka who has recorded thousands of songs for Indian films in her six-decade career. Composers of film music, known as music directors, are also well known. Remixing of film songs with modern rhythms is common, and producers may release remixed versions of some of their film's songs with the film's soundtrack albums. Dancing in Bollywood films, especially older films, is modeled on Indian dance, classical dance, dances of North Indian courtesans to waif, or folk dances. In modern films, Indian dance blends with Western dance styles as seen on MTV or in Broadway musicals. Western pop and classical dance numbers are commonly seen side by side in the same film. The hero or heroine often performs with a troupe of supporting dancers. Many song and dance routines in Indian films contain unrealistically quick shifts of location or changes of costume between verses of a song. If the hero and heroine dance and sing a duet, it is often staged in natural surroundings or architecturally grand settings. Songs typically comment on the action taking place in the film. A song may be worked into the plot, so a character has a reason to sing. It may externalize a character's thoughts, or presage an event in the film, such as two characters falling in love. The songs are often referred to as a dream sequence, with things happening which would not normally happen in the real world. Song and dance scenes were often filmed in Kashmir but, due to political unrest in Kashmir since the end of the 1980s, they have been shot in Western Europe, particularly Switzerland and Austria. Contemporary Bollywood dancers include Madhuri Dixit, Rithik Roshan, Aishwarya Rai Bechan, Sri Devi, Meenakshi Seshadri, Malaika Aurora Khan, Shahid Kapoor, Katrina Kaif and Tiger Shroff. Older dancers include Helen, known for her cabaret numbers, Madhubala, Vijanthamala, Padmini, Hema Malini, Mumtaz, Kuku Murray, Parveen Babi, Wahida Rahman, Meena Kamari, and Shami Kapoor. Bollywood producers have been releasing a film's soundtrack as tapes or CDs before the film's release, hoping that the music will attract audiences. A soundtrack is often more popular than its film. Some producers also release music videos, usually but not always, with a song from the film. Topic: <inaudible> Finances. <inaudible> Bollywood films are multi-million dollar productions, with the most expensive productions costing up to 1 billion rupees, about 20 million United States dollars. 
The science fiction film Ra, One was made on a budget of 1.35 billion rupees about $27 million, making it the most expensive Bollywood film of all time. Sets, costumes, special effects and cinematography were less than world class, with some notable exceptions, until the mid to late 1990s. As Western films and television are more widely distributed in India, there is increased pressure for Bollywood films to reach the same production levels, particularly in action and special effects. Recent Bollywood films, like Krish 2006, have employed international technicians such as Hong Kong-based action choreographer Tony Ching. The increasing accessibility of professional action and special effects, coupled with rising film budgets, have seen an increase in action and science fiction films. Since overseas scenes are attractive at the box office, Mumbai film crews are filming in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, the United States, Europe and elsewhere. Indian producers have also obtained funding for big-budget films shot in India, such as Lagan and Devdas. Funding for Bollywood films often comes from private distributors and a few large studios. Although Indian banks and financial institutions had been forbidden from lending to film studios, the ban has been lifted. Finances are not regulated, some funding comes from illegitimate sources such as the Mumbai underworld, which is known to influence several prominent film personalities. Mumbai organized crime hitmen shot Rakesh Roshan, a film director and father of star Rithik Roshan, in January 2000. In 2001, the Central Bureau of Investigation seized all prints of Chori Chori Chupke Chupke after the film was found to be funded by members of the Mumbai underworld. Another problem facing Bollywood is widespread copyright infringement of its films. Often, bootleg DVD copies of movies are available before they are released in cinemas. Manufacturing of bootleg DVD, VCD, and VHS copies of the latest movie titles is an established small-scale industry in parts of South and Southeast Asia. The Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry FICCI estimates that the Bollywood industry loses $100 million annually from unlicensed home videos and DVDs. In addition to the homegrown market, demand for these copies is large amongst portions of the Indian diaspora. Bootleg copies are the only way people in Pakistan can watch Bollywood movies, since the Pakistani government has banned their sale, distribution and telecast. Films are frequently broadcast without compensation by small cable TV companies in India and other parts of South Asia. Small convenience stores, run by members of the Indian diaspora in the US and the UK, regularly stock tapes and DVDs of dubious provenance. Consumer copying adds to the problem. The availability of illegal copies of movies on the Internet also contributes to industry losses. Satellite TV, television, and imported foreign films are making inroads into the domestic Indian entertainment market. In the past, most Bollywood films could make money, now, fewer do. Most Bollywood producers make money, however, recouping their investments from many sources of revenue, including the sale of ancillary rights. There are increasing returns from theaters in Western countries like the United Kingdom, Canada, and the United States, where Bollywood is slowly being noticed. As more Indians migrate to these countries, they form a growing market for upscale Indian films. In 2002, Bollywood sold 3.6 billion tickets and had a total revenue including theater tickets, DVDs and television of $1.3 billion. Hollywood films sold 2.6 billion tickets and had a total revenue of $51 billion. Topic. Advertising A number of Indian artists hand-painted movie billboards and posters. M. F. Hussain painted film posters early in his career. Human labor was found to be cheaper than printing and distributing publicity material. 
Most of the large, ubiquitous billboards in India's major cities are now created with computer-printed vinyl, old hand-painted posters, once considered ephemera, a collectible folk art, releasing film music, or music videos, before a film's release may be considered a form of advertising. A popular tune is believed to help attract audiences. Bollywood publicists use the Internet as a venue for advertising. Most bigger budget films have a websites on which audiences can view trailers, stills and information on the story, cast, and crew. Bollywood is also used to advertise other products. Product placement, used in Hollywood, is also common in Bollywood. Topic. International filming Bollywood's increasing use of international settings such as Switzerland, London, Paris, New York, Mexico, Brazil and Singapore does not necessarily represent the people and cultures of those locales. Contrary to these spaces and geographies being filmed as they are, they are actually Indianized by adding Bollywood actors and Hindi-speaking extras to them. While immersing in Bollywood films, viewers get to see their local experiences duplicated in different locations around the world. According to Shakuntala Rao, "...media representation can depict India's shifting relation with the world economy, but must retain its Indianus in moments of dynamic hybridity." Indianus Cultural identity poses a problem with Bollywood's popularity among varied diaspora audiences, but gives its domestic audience a sense of uniqueness from other immigrant groups. <laughs> <laughs> Awards The Filmfare Awards are some of the most prominent awards given to Hindi films in India. The Indian screen magazine Filmfare began the awards in 1954 recognizing the best films of 1953, and they were originally known as the Clare Awards after the magazine's editor. Modeled on the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences poll-based merit format, individuals may vote in separate categories. A dual voting system was developed in 1956, the National Film Awards were also introduced in 1954. The Indian government has sponsored the awards, given by its Directorate of Film Festivals DFF, since 1973. The DFF screens Bollywood films, films from the other regional movie industries, and independent, art films. The awards are made at an annual ceremony presided over by the President of India. Unlike the Filmfare Awards, which are chosen by the public and a committee of experts, the National Film Awards are decided by a government panel. Other awards ceremonies for Hindi films in India are the Screen Awards begun in 1995 and the Stardust Awards, which began in 2003. The International Indian Film Academy Awards begun in 2000 and the Z Cine Awards begun in 1998 are held abroad in a different country each year. Topic. Global markets In addition to their popularity among the Indian diaspora from Nigeria and Senegal to Egypt and Russia, generations of non-Indians have grown up with Bollywood. Indian cinema's early contacts with other regions made inroads into the Soviet Union, the Middle East, Southeast Asia, and China. Bollywood entered the consciousness of Western audiences and producers during the late 20th century, and Western actors now seek roles in Bollywood films. <laughs> Asia-Pacific <laughs> South Asia Bollywood films are also popular in Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Nepal, where Hindi Urdu is widely understood. Many Pakistanis understand Hindi, due to its linguistic similarity to Urdu. Although Pakistan banned the import of Bollywood films in 1965, trade in unlicensed DVDs and illegal cable broadcasts ensured their continued popularity. 
Exceptions to the ban were made for a few films, such as the colorized re-release of Mughal-e-Azam and Taj Mahal in 2006. Early in 2008, the Pakistani government permitted the import of 16 films. More easing followed in 2009 and 2010. Although it is opposed by nationalists and representatives of Pakistan's small film industry, it is embraced by cinema owners who are making a profit after years of low receipts. The most popular actors in Pakistan are the three Khans of Bollywood, Salman, Shah Rukh, and Amir. The most popular actress is Madhuri Dixit. At India Pakistan cricket matches during the 1990s, Pakistani fans chanted, Madhuri Dedo, Kashmir Lelo. Give Madhuri, take Kashmir. Bollywood films in Nepal earn more than Nepali films, and Salman Khan, Akshay Kumar, and Shah Rukh Khan are popular in the country. The films are also popular in Afghanistan due to its proximity to the Indian subcontinent and their cultural similarities, particularly in music. Popular actors include Shah Rukh Khan, A.J. Devgan, Sunny Diol, Aishwarya Rai, Preeti Zinta, and Madhuri Dixit. A number of Bollywood films were filmed in Afghanistan and some dealt with the country, including Dharmatma, Kabul Express, Kudar Gawa and Escape from Taliban. Southeast Asia Bollywood films are popular in Southeast Asia, particularly in maritime Southeast Asia. The three Khans are very popular in the Malay world, including Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore. The films are also fairly popular in Thailand. India has cultural ties with Indonesia, and Bollywood films were introduced to the country at the end of World War II in 1945. The Angry Young Man films of Amitabh Bachchan and Salim Javid were popular during the 1970s and 1980s before Bollywood's popularity began gradually declining in the 1980s and 1990s. It experienced an Indonesian revival with the release of Shah Rukh Khan's Kuch Kuch Hota Hai 1998 in 2001, which was a bigger box office success in the country than Titanic 1997. Bollywood has had a strong presence in Indonesia since then, particularly Shah Rukh Khan films such as Mohabbatine 2000, Kabi Kushi Kabi Gaam, 2001, Kal Ho Na Ho, Chalta Chalta and Koi, Mil Gaya All 2003, and Veer Zara 2004. <laughs> East Asia Some Bollywood films have been widely appreciated in China, Japan, and South Korea. Several Hindi films have been commercially successful in Japan, including Mehboob Khan's AAN 1952, starring Dilip Kumar and Aziz Mirza's Rayu Ban Gaya Gentleman 1992, starring Shah Rukh Khan. The latter sparked a two-year boom in Indian films after its 1997 release, with Dil Shay, 1998, a beneficiary of the boom. The highest grossing Hindi film in Japan is Three Idiots 2009, starring Amir Khan, which received a Japanese Academy Award nomination. The film was also a critical and commercial success in South Korea, Dr. Kotnis Ki Amar Khani, Awara, and Do Bigger Zaman were successful in China during the 1940s and 1950s, and remain popular with their original audience. Few Indian films were commercially successful in the country during the 1970s and 1980s, among them Tahir Hussain's Caravan, Nuri and Disco Dancer. Indian film stars popular in China included Raj Kapoor, Nargis, and Mithun Chakraborty. Hindi films declined significantly in popularity in China during the 1980s. Films by Amir Khan have recently been successful, and Lagan was the first Indian film with a nationwide Chinese release in 2011. 
Chinese filmmaker He Ping was impressed by Lagan, particularly its soundtrack, and hired its composer A. R. Rahman to score his Warriors of Heaven and Earth 2003. When Three Idiots was released in China, China was the world's 15th largest film market, partly due to its widespread pirate DVD distribution at the time. The pirate market introduced the film to Chinese audiences, however, and it became a cult hit. According to the Dubin Film Review site, Three Idiots is China's 12th most popular film of all time, only one domestic Chinese film Farewell My Concubine ranks higher, and Amir Khan acquired a large Chinese fanbase as a result. After Three Idiots, several of Khan's other films including 2007's Tare's Amin Par and 2008's Gargini also developed cult followings. China became the world's second largest film market after the United States by 2013, paving the way for Khan's box office success with Doom 3 2013, PK 2014, and Dangle 2016. The latter is the 16th highest grossing film in China, the 5th highest grossing non-English language film worldwide, and the highest grossing non-English foreign film in any market. Several Khan films, including Tare Zamin Pa, Three Idiots, and Dangle, are highly rated on Dubin. His next film, Secret Superstar 2017, starring Zyra Warzam, broke Dangle's record for the highest-grossing opening weekend by an Indian film and cemented Khan's status as a king of the Chinese box office. Secret Superstar was China's highest-grossing foreign film of 2018 to date. Khan has become a household name in China, with his success described as a form of Indian soft power improving China-India relations despite political tensions. With Bollywood competing with Hollywood in the Chinese market, the success of Khan's films has driven up the price for Chinese distributors of Indian film imports. Salman Khan's Bajrangi Bhaijan and Irfan Khan's Hindi medium were also Chinese hits in early 2018. Topic. Oceania Although Bollywood is less successful on some Pacific islands such as New Guinea, it ranks second to Hollywood in Fiji with its large Indian minority, Australia and New Zealand. Australia also has a large South Asian diaspora, and Bollywood is popular amongst non-Asians in the country as well. Since 1997, the country has been a backdrop for an increasing number of Bollywood films. Indian filmmakers, attracted to Australia's diverse locations and landscapes, initially used the country as a setting for song and dance scenes, however, Australian locations now figure in Bollywood film plots. Hindi films shot in Australia usually incorporate Australian culture. Yash Raj films Salam Namaste 2005, the first Indian film shot entirely in Australia, was the most successful Bollywood film of 2005 in that country. It was followed by the box office successes Heyy Baby Y, 2007 Chakda. India 2007, and Singh is King 2008. Prime Minister John Howard said during a visit to India after the release of Salam Namaste that he wanted to encourage Indian filmmaking in Australia to increase tourism, and he appointed Steve Waugh as tourism ambassador to India. Australian actress Tanya Zayeta, who appeared in Salam Namaste and several other Bollywood films, was eager to expand her career in Bollywood. Topic. Eastern Europe and Central Asia Bollywood films are popular in the former Soviet Union Russia, Eastern Europe, and Central Asia, and have been dubbed into Russian. Indian films were more popular in the Soviet Union than Hollywood films and, sometimes, domestic Soviet films. The first Indian film released in the Soviet Union was Dati Ki Lal 1946, directed by Khwaja Ahmed Abbas and based on the Bengal famine of 1943, in 1949. 300 Indian films were released in the Soviet Union after that, most were Bollywood films with higher average audience figures than domestic Soviet productions. 
50 Indian films had over 20 million viewers, compared to 41 Hollywood films. Some, such as Awara 1951 and Disco Dancer 1982, had more than 60 million viewers and established actors Raj Kapoor, Nagas, Rishi Kapoor and Mithun Chakraborty in the country, according to diplomat Ashok Sharma, who served in the Commonwealth of Independent States. The popularity of Bollywood in the CIS dates back to the Soviet days when the films from Hollywood and other Western cinema centers were banned in the Soviet Union. As there was no means of other cheap entertainment, the films from Bollywood provided the Soviets a cheap source of entertainment as they were supposed to be non-controversial and non-political. In addition, the Soviet Union was recovering from the onslaught of the Second World War. The films from India, which were also recovering from the disaster of partition and the struggle for freedom from colonial rule, were found to be a good source of providing hope with entertainment to the struggling masses. The aspirations and needs of the people of both countries matched to a great extent. These films were dubbed in Russian and shown in theaters throughout the Soviet Union. The films from Bollywood also strengthened family values, which was a big factor for their popularity with the government authorities in the Soviet Union. After the collapse of the Soviet film distribution system, Hollywood filled the void in the Russian film market and Bollywood's market share shrank. A 2007 Russia Today report noted a renewed interest in Bollywood by young Russians. In Poland, Shah Rukh Khan has a large following. He was introduced to Polish audiences with the 2005 release of Kabi Kushi Kabi Gam. 2001 and his other films, including Dilshe. 1998, Main Hoon N.A. and Kabi Alvida Na Kenna 2006, became hits in the country. Bollywood films are often covered in Gazeta Wyborcza, formerly Poland's largest newspaper. <inaudible> <inaudible> Middle East and North Africa Hindi films have become popular in Arab countries and imported Indian films are usually subtitled in Arabic when they are released. Bollywood has progressed in Israel since the early 2000s, with channels dedicated to Indian films on cable television. MBC Bollywood and Z Aflam show Hindi movies and serials. In Egypt, Bollywood films were popular during the 1970s and 1980s. In 1987, however, they were restricted to a handful of films by the Egyptian government. Amitabh Bachchan has remained popular in the country and Indian tourists visiting Egypt are asked, Do you know Amitabh Bachchan? Bollywood movies are regularly screened in Dubai cinemas, and Bollywood is becoming popular in Turkey. Bafi was the first Hindi film to have a wide theatrical release in that country. Bollywood also has viewers in Central Asia, particularly Uzbekistan and Tajikistan. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> South America. Bollywood films are not influential in most of South America, although its culture and dance is recognized. Due to significant South Asian diaspora communities in Suriname and Guyana, however, Hindi language movies are popular. In 2006, Doom 2 became the first Bollywood film to be shot in Rio de Janeiro. In January 2012, it was announced that UTV Motion Pictures would begin releasing films in Peru with Gazarish. Topic: Africa. Hindi films were originally distributed to some parts of Africa by Lebanese businessmen, and Mother India 1957 continued to be screened in Nigeria decades after its release. Indian movies have influenced Hausa clothing, songs have been covered by Hausa singers, and stories have influenced Nigerian novelists. Stickers of Indian films and stars decorate taxis and buses in Nigeria's northern region, and posters of Indian films hang on the walls of tailoring shops and mechanics garages. Unlike Europe and North America, where Indian films cater to the expatriate mark, Bollywood films became popular in West Africa despite the lack of a significant Indian audience. 
One possible explanation is cultural similarity, the wearing of turbans, animals in markets, porters carrying large bundles, and traditional wedding celebrations. Within Muslim culture, Indian movies were said to show respect toward women, Hollywood movies were seen as having no shame. In Indian movies, women are modestly dressed, men and women rarely kiss and there is no nudity, so the films are said to have culture, which Hollywood lacks. The latter, don't base themselves on the problems of the people. Indian films are based on socialist values and the reality of developing countries emerging from years of colonialism. Indian movies permitted a new youth culture without becoming Western. The first Indian film shot in Mauritius was Sutan, starring Rajesh Khanna. In 1983, in South Africa, film imports from India were watched by black and Indian audiences. Several Bollywood figures have traveled to Africa for films and off camera projects. Padmashri Lalu Prasad Yadav was filmed in South Africa. Dil Jo Bhi Kahe was also filmed almost entirely in Mauritius, which has a large ethnic Indian population. Bollywood, however, seems to be diminishing in popularity in Africa. New Bollywood films are more sexually explicit and violent. Nigerian viewers observed that older films from the 1950s and 1960s had more culture and were less westernized. The old days of India avidly advocating decolonization and India's policy was wholly influenced by his missionary zeal to end racial domination and discrimination in the African territories were replaced. The emergence of Nollywood West Africa's film industry has also contributed to the declining popularity of Bollywood films, as sexualized Indian films became more like American films. Kishore Kumar and Amitabh Bachchan have been popular in Egypt and Somalia. In Ethiopia, Bollywood movies are shown with Hollywood productions in town square theaters such as the Cinema Ethiopia in Addis Ababa. Less commercial Bollywood films are also screened elsewhere in North Africa. Topic: <laughs> Western Europe and North America. The first Indian film to be released in the Western world and receive mainstream attention was AAN 1952, directed by Mehboob Khan and starring Dilip Kumar and Nimi. It was subtitled in 17 languages and released in 28 countries, including the United Kingdom, the United States, and France. AAN was praised in the contemporary British press, and The Times compared it favorably to Hollywood productions. Mehboob Khan's later Academy Award nominated Mother India 1957 was a success in overseas markets, including Europe, Russia, the Eastern Bloc, French territories, and Latin America. Many Bollywood films have been commercially successful in the United Kingdom. The most successful Indian actor at the UK box office has been Shah Rukh Khan, whose popularity in British Asian communities played a key role in introducing Bollywood to the UK with films such as Dar 1993, Dilwali Dulhaniya La Jayinga and Kuch Kuch Hota Hai 1998. Dil Shay 1998 was the first Indian film to enter the UK top 10. A number of Indian films, such as Dilwali Dulhaniya La Jayinga and Kabi Kushi Kabi Gaam 2001, have been set in London. Bollywood is also appreciated in France, Germany, the Netherlands, and Scandinavia. Bollywood films are dubbed in German and shown regularly on the German television channel RTL2. Germany is the second largest European market for Indian films, after the United Kingdom. The most recognized Indian actor in Germany is Shah Rukh Khan, who has had box office success in the country with films such as Don 2 2011 and Om Shanti Om 2007. He has a large German fan base, particularly in Berlin, where the tabloid Die Tageszeitung compared his popularity to that of the Pope. 
Bollywood has experienced revenue growth in Canada and the United States, particularly in the South Asian communities of large cities such as Toronto, Chicago, and New York City. Yash Raj Films, one of India's largest production houses and distributors, reported in September 2005 that Bollywood films in the United States earned about $100 million per year in theater screenings, video sales, and the sale of movie soundtracks. Indian films earn more money in the United States than films from any other non English speaking country. Since the mid 1990s, a number of Indian films have been largely or entirely shot in New York, Los Angeles, Vancouver or Toronto. Films such as The Guru 2002 and Marigold: An Adventure in India 2007 attempted to popularize Bollywood for Hollywood. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Plagiarism Pressured by rushed production schedules and small budgets, some Bollywood writers and musicians have been known to plagiarize. Ideas, plot lines, tunes or riffs have been copied from other Indian film industries or foreign films including Hollywood and other Asian films without acknowledging the source. Before the 1990s, plagiarism occurred with impunity. Copyright enforcement was lax in India and few actors or directors saw an official contract. The Hindi film industry was not widely known to non-Indian audiences except in the Soviet states, who would be unaware that their material had been copied. Audiences may not have been aware of plagiarism, since many in India were unfamiliar with foreign films and music. Although copyright enforcement in India is still somewhat lenient, Bollywood and other film industries are more aware of each other and Indian audiences are more familiar with foreign movies and music. Organizations such as the India-EU Film Initiative seek to foster a community between filmmakers and industry professionals in India and the European Union. A commonly reported justification for plagiarism in Bollywood is that cautious producers want to remake popular Hollywood films in an Indian context. Although screenwriters generally produce original scripts, many are rejected due to uncertainty about whether a film will be successful. Poorly paid screenwriters have also been criticized for a lack of creativity. Some filmmakers see plagiarism in Bollywood as an integral part of globalization, with which Western particularly American, culture is embedding itself into Indian culture. Vikram Bhatt, director of Raz a remake of What Lies Beneath starring Bipasha Basu and Kasaur a remake of Jagged Edge, has spoken about the influence of American culture and Bollywood's desire to produce box office hits based along the same lines. Financially, I would be more secure knowing that a particular piece of work has already done well at the box office. Copying is endemic everywhere in India. Our TV shows are adaptations of American programs. We want their films, their cars, their planes, their Diet Cokes and also their attitude. The American way of life is creeping into our culture." According to Mahesh Bhatt, "...if you hide the source, you're a genius. There's no such thing as originality in the creative sphere." Although very few cases of film copyright violations have been taken to court because of a slow legal process, the makers of Partner 2007 and Zinda 2005 were targeted by the owners and distributors of the original films, Hitch and Oldboy. The American studio 20th Century Fox brought Mumbai-based BR films to court over the latter's forthcoming Banda Yer Bindas High, which Fox alleged was an illegal remake of My Cousin Vinny. BR Films eventually settled out of court for about $200,000, paving the way for its film's release. Some studios comply with copyright law. In 2008, Orion Pictures secured the rights to remake Hollywood's Wedding Crashes. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Music. The Pakistani Qawwali musician Nusrat Fatah Ali Khan had a big impact on Bollywood music, inspiring numerous Indian musicians working in Bollywood, especially during the 1990s. 
However, there were many instances of Indian music directors plagiarizing Khan's music to produce hit filmy songs. Several popular examples include Viju Shah's hit song, Two Cheese Badi High Mast Mast, in Mora 1994, being plagiarized from Khan's popular Kawali song, Damn Mast Calendar, Mera Piya Garaya, used in Yarana 1995, and Sanu ek pal chain naaaye in Judai 1997. Despite the significant number of hit Bollywood songs plagiarized from his music, Nusrat Fatah Ali Khan was reportedly tolerant towards the plagiarism. One of the Bollywood music directors who frequently plagiarized him, Anu Malik, claimed that he loved Khan's music and was actually showing admiration by using his tunes. However, Khan was reportedly aggrieved when Malik turned his spiritual Allah Hu, Allah Hu into I love you, I love you. In Orzar, 1997, Khan said, He has taken my devotional song Allahu and converted it into I love you. He should at least respect my religious songs. Bollywood soundtracks also plagiarized Guinean singer Mori Kante, particularly his 1987 album Aquaba Beach. His song, Tama, inspired two Bollywood songs, Bapi Lahiri's Tama Tama in Thanadar 1990 and Juma Chuma in Lakshmikant Payalal's soundtrack for Hum 1991. The latter also featured Ek Dusre She which copied Kante's Inchala. His song, Ye K Ye K, was used as background music in the 1990 Bollywood film Agnipath, inspired the Bollywood song, Tama Tama, in Thanadar. <laughs> See also